must constantly look at things in a different way. The Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast was created by two physical therapists out of the desire to learn more about the different educational roles in physical therapy and healthcare and how healthcare education works by talking with educational leaders and people with different perspectives within physical therapy and across interdisciplinary lines on how education can be improved to disrupt the status quo of healthcare education. This is our journey and thanks for listening. Are you a third-year physical therapy student that excels on tests when you have study guides, checklists, and deadlines? With all of the information available about how to prepare for the NPTE, it's easy to get disorganized and not feel prepared going into the big day. NPTE Prep Success is an online course that provides PT students easy-to-use study guides and step-by-step guidance through the NPTE preparation. To learn more, visit kylericeprep.com. Thank you again all for your continued support, and now for the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast. I'm your host, F. Scott Field, and I'm coming to you live from Clearwater Beach, Florida, at the SSPT Live 2019 conference. It's been a beautiful weekend, some amazing people, some amazing talks, and I'm bringing you an amazing guest today. We have on the show Stephen Dunn, the Pilates expert, the guru, the man behind the, the, the big show when it comes to Pilates. Stephen, tell us a little bit about your education educational background and how it brought us to where you are today. Yeah, well, first of all, just thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, my, uh, I ended up getting through physical therapy school in 1998, and I graduated with a master's program. We were the first program at LSU to have a master's. It had just switched to, from a bachelor's. And it was about um, four years into my career that I got exposed to Pilates. And I got exposed to Pilates from someone who had a clinic in Lake Tahoe that they were trying to sell and they were wanting to bring someone in interested in Pilates to take it over and that led me to find Pilates and I signed up with a Pilates certification in LA. I was living in LA at the time and I worked with a girl a woman out of um, Santa Monica and this was pretty early in the days of the Pilates certification so there wasn't a, um, a real standardized way of doing things where there has become a standardized way so she was involved with the Pilates Method Alliance at that time, but it was before the Pilates Method Alliance had become like the governing body, become before it had become the the, the standardized test. So it was a, a training through her. It took me about eight months. My wife and I did it together. And after those eight months, we started doing a little bit of um, building a new business with incorporating Pilates into the physical therapy and also offering wellness because my wife's not a physical therapist. So it was a, a education that allowed her and I to go through something together and utilize the same skill set for my physical therapy patients, but then her utilize it for her wellness patients, which in all fairness was one and the same because they would go from me to her. Yeah, so let's talk about that a little bit. You've got a clinic in Austin. Tell us a little bit about the the clinic and kind of how it works, the layout, the ins and outs, uh, you know, how you incorporate patients to PT and Pilates and back and forth. It seems like a two-way street. It is definitely a two-way street. Um, People will show up to see me for physical therapy because a doctor has referred them and there's only a handful of docs that truly send me business um, because I'm different enough. (laughs) Um, But uh, the doctors um, will certainly... uh, Uh, refer people to me and mostly word of mouth where they'll come to see me for back pain and or neck pain or or whatever injury you know post-surgery whatever but mostly spinal is is the big key and then what ends up happening is that they see me I end up the very first time I work with them and their assessment, I lay out the entire plan of I'm going to see you this amount of time. I'm going to move you over to work with my trainers for this amount of time. And we're going to settle into a group class at this amount of time. And it's really like a one month, two month, three month thing that we're talking about. It's kind of like a three month plan. And that's what I have the conversations with, with all of my patients day one so that they know what they're getting into so that they're not, I'm not looking for someone to try me once or twice to see if I'm 
going to help them or not. Um, I'm looking for someone to commit to this plan because I will tell them two, one or two sessions. You'll feel better, but it ain't going to solve the problem. It's not going to be the solution. Um, so that's one way that we get people in the door. But we also get people in the door because Pilates is a very booming business right now. And people know about Pilates more than physical therapy. They know Pilates has less murkiness to it than physical therapy. There's so much out there with physical therapy that, you know, wound care, <laughs> pediatrics, you know, inpatient rehab. There's just so broad that pe- the common person doesn't know what that is. So people will show up to do Pilates because their doctor told them to try Pilates for back pain. Maybe that doctor that won't refer them to me for PT will then refer them to my wife for Pilates. It's really kind of funny. Um, so they show up to see the trainers, my wife or her staff, and then that opens the door to, oh wait, you're doing this wrong. We see, my trainers see something's physically not working correctly. They, the client expresses a concern, a question, uh, I have this problem, I have this, I have this surgery. And then before you know it, my Pilates instructor says, well, you should probably go see Steven for a consult so that he can tell me how I can help you the best. It's never go see Steven, but it's always about go see Steven so we can help you, so we can figure out what you need to do. And it is a two-way street, and most people do show up for me and they end up going to Pilates. But people show up for Pilates and end up coming to me just as well. We have something called Class Pass that we're involved with. It's a um, it's like a um, online membership site that people pay, and we're a member of Class Pass. And so anyone that pays Class Pass, they can come take a class, like one or two classes a month at our office. They can go to many places all over the country and take classes. And so people will show up from Class Pass. It's we get a we get a discounted rate from Class Pass. If our class is normally thirty seven bucks, we might get twenty for the, from Class Pass. But it's a new person in the door who then all of a sudden they're trying Pilates, but they end up on my schedule because they're hurting and they need more. So it does it comes in many many ways. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about what you're doing to educate the public as to Pilates and what it is, and then clinicians as to Pilates and what what it is and how they can maybe incorporate it. Well, with the public, a lot of our messages with with our um, Facebook and social media, it's it's not so much about physical therapy. It, it's really not so much about Pilates. It's just about the solution and the transformation we can provide. But we tend to play up the Pilates word because it is well known, yeah. and it's a it's a again a buzzword right now. And it's one of those. It's been around for so long that people keep thinking it's a fad that's going to end, and then it's been around for a hundred years, so it's not going anywhere. Um, so we we really and we try to educate the clients that there's a difference in Pilates when you're coming from a rehab standpoint and it, versus someone who's doing Pilates at let's say a fitness uh, boutique Pilates studio. Some of those fitness studios are very much Pilates, but some of them have kind of evolved into what we call like a CrossFit style of Pilates. And the machines are different. The, there's microphones. It's music. It's it's a very it's like a very different vibe and feel for what you know. Pilates is about connecting, and they're it's they're making it like we know you're a Type A person. Let's make let's bring Pilates to you. And we're like saying no, Pilates is Pilates. We need to change you. We don't need to change Pilates to fit you. So we, we try to educate people that if they've done Pilates at certain studios in our in our town, then that's a totally different style of Pilates than what we're doing. And if someone's been injured in Pilates at this place, well, we have to kind of communicate to them that what we're doing is, is different and is coming from a, a space of healing, not a space of fitness to look good. So that's a big thing because people do, they don't really understand that difference. Now, when it comes to physical therapists, I had decided about, I guess it's been about a year ago now, maybe nine months, I, uh, I set up a Facebook page and it's called uh, Pilates for PTs is the, the at for, you know, the, the at name for Facebook. And it's, um, it's a page where I go on every, typically every Wednesday and I do a, a Facebook live and I just share some information, whether it's like 
a win I had in the studio that week, a way I found a patient from social media, the way I found a patient from YouTube, um, an email that I sent out that had some success, um, how to get certified in Pilates, just rant, whatever questions I'm getting from people in this group, it becomes a, a content place to create um, more information. And so I, I'm at a point where I want to teach other physical therapists how they can incorporate Pilates into their practice so that they can create a wellness program, a new revenue source. They can keep people around their studio, their clinic for years instead of discharging people and waiting for them to get injured again, hoping they remember you to come back for PT. So it's a very different different flow and concept. Sure. So let's talk about that a little bit. How do you plan to educate these physical therapists and these healthcare practitioners who are interested in, in Pilates or adding Pilates to their services? What What is coming down the pipeline from you? Well, you know, it's interesting you ask that because I've been asked so many questions really for, for like, we've been open in Austin since 2005 and that's really where we started our Pilates thing. I've been asked so many questions by so many people for so many years that I, I've, I've answered them as much as I can but what I've decided to do is put it all into one organized place and I've created an online course that I'm going to teach people what we've done and, and how we've done it and it's a, it's a process of this is what you need to do to get certified. This is what the definitions are. This is what you need to do to get people in the door. This is the forms you need. This is the cost. And so instead of trying to answer people's questions in five minutes or 10 minutes, which is usually all the time I truly have, maybe I get 30 minutes on the phone with someone if I'm lucky, but it's really a place where it's everything that I've learned over all these years in one organized place that people can take it and learn it. And we'll have a Facebook group for these people that they can ask questions to me and get answers at all time. And it's a, it's a way to, to take what I've learned from all of my mentors and create, let me get my niche out to the, to the people and whoever's interested in Pilates. It's a way to, to take your practice to a different level. And it's not necessarily about this financial level. Yes, I'm, we're doing really well right now, but it's a level that people trust you because you're spending time with them. You're focused on them. My patients don't care that I don't take insurance because of the, the way I listen to them, the way I engage them, the way we, we treat them, the way my dog runs up to them and licks them when they walk in the door. So all these little things. So it's really a place where, where I've learned the best. I, I graduated a long time ago in 98 and I never had online courses or online things as, a, as an option. And four years ago I started studying online and it was quite a game changer for me and everything that I've had success with over the last four years since I've gone cash, three and a half, it's been based on what I've learned in online courses. So I figured, hey, it's time to get what I've been doing into that place, into that field, because now if someone asks me questions, I'll be glad to answer them, and I'll be glad to do a call with them and, and, and talk to them and give them answers for free. But the detail and the, the amount of information in that organized place is what is really, that's what I need. So I'm just taking what helped me, and I'm now creating a ways for other people to learn from that. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, where can people find that if they're interested? Yeah, so the um, the website is going to be uh, the Dunn Method uh, dot com, and we're going to have some. And that's your last name. The that's D-U-N-N, right. right? The U N N. That's right. And we're going to have um, through that website a couple of different uh, options. The first option is going to be this course. There'll be some other products coming, but that's the first one. So, and if anyone is interested in that Facebook group, it's uh, www.facebook.com forward slash Pilates for PTs, and that's going to be the that's the name of the course Pilates for PTs awesome awesome well Stephen we like to ask every one of our guests this final question if you could change one aspect of higher education whether it be the DPT or, or otherwise related what aspect would you change and how would you change it you know that's a fantastic question I have not thought about at all and looking at the way things are done now I think that professors are great uh, we, you, know, you and I just talked about my old professor before we started this who influenced me Bob Rowe give it up Bob Rowe yeah. and I um, guest on <laughs> and he really influenced me to, to 
learn manual therapy. But what I didn't get in PT school was anyone who had great clinical experience of running a business of, you know, Bob Rowe worked there at the clinic on campus and saw the hockey players and saw people. So, I mean, I saw him treating people, but like it was different than someone who ran a business. So I would love to, if I was in PT school, I would want to learn from people who were doing it, not just people who are teaching, but people who are actually out there doing it and have had success doing it and doing it in different ways, not just the, uh, not just the traditional route. Um, because you might teach like, like I know in Miami, for example, you can get a Pilates elective in PT school. So you can come out of PT school with a DPT, but also have a, a certification in Pilates. That's, that's awesome. And I think that should be at every, every university, every PT school and not, and not just Pilates, other types of things so that people can learn that your DPT is great and I have a master's, but your if you can learn some other things, you can be a lot more successful. And the reality is, is my wife paid 3000 bucks for a Pilates education that she now charges $127 an hour. She's charging more than some of the PTs I've heard in this course that are telling me that they're charging 100 120 So from a $3,000 education, she has a full degree from LSU in marketing. She has nothing with it, zero. And she's got a $3,000 Pilates education that she now now charges $127 an hour, charges $5,000 for a full certification off of something that like we did, we never thought that that training that she did with me would have snowballed into that. So practical experience. And I, and I know that's something you're passionate about yeah. from our relationship. So, yeah, you bring up so many good points there to kind of unravel. So I'll, I'll try to take them like one at a time. But one of the issues that we've heard about on this show time and time again is there that disconnect from the ivory tower of academia to what's actually going on in the clinic. Mm-hmm. And whether that be clinical hands on skills or whether it be business skills, there there is that disconnect between academicians who, you know, haven't treated in many years yeah. and, and the students that we're, we're putting out, the product that we're putting out. And that's not a knock on academicians. It's not a knock on, on the students. It's it's the, not a knock on the programs. It literally is just the, the construct of what we're currently in. And realistically, it's why we started the podcast, right? Education was kind of broken. We wanted to help fix it. We don't know the answers, so let's get the experts on here to talk about how they think it could be fixed. Mm -hmm. What's the best thing we could take from each expert and really try to incorporate it into education, into healthcare, into business, into whatever it is that we want to do. How can we how can we make this better? And so so that's the first point that I think you kind of made. And and we had talked with with a couple of guests here now previously who had you know mentioned as well that they wish there was more business school involved or business thinking at least involved in physical therapy education. And the problem with that is that physical therapy education is not there to be a business school. We talked about this often, how chiropractors get marketing classes with their their, their schooling. So they're a little bit ahead of us in that, right? Well, the argument for physical therapy schools is that, look, we barely have enough time to teach the content to get them ready for the board exam. How are we going to fit in, you know, elective courses? But, But I'm not just talking about business. I'm talking, like you said, yoga courses. Yeah. Pilates courses, business courses. There's a couple of electives out there. We're seeing some more women's health. We're seeing some strength and conditioning. You know, we're seeing sports. We're seeing electives coming up. The problem is you still can't touch all of them yeah. all the time. Yeah. So, so you know, if you take a women's health course, that may take away from you being able to take the business course. That's a good point. And, you know, and, and if you take the business course, well, then maybe you can't take the sports course. It just, you know, it's, it's a finite amount of time we have in these PT programs, and it seems to be getting short shorter and shorter and shorter. So, you know, there's only so much you can cram into one little brain over yeah. the course of a period of time, right? And I had no electives when I was in school. Yeah. I had no choice. Yeah. It was like, this Here's is your, this is it. Here it is. I didn't get to take anything extra. Yeah. And, and again, right, it, it kind of goes back to that theory that like, you know, if you have a kid in sports and you specialize him in one sport early on for the rest of his life, it's not really a great outcome. Yeah. We're finding now that, you know, it's better to put him in a bunch of different things, let him try a bunch of different things, taste a bunch of different things, practice a bunch of different things. And that usually leads to a better, more well-rounded athlete. I think the same thing kind of goes for clinicians, for physical therapists, for business owners. Like, you got to taste a bunch of things. You got to try a bunch of different yeah. things and dabble and just see what works and what you like and what your interests are. Totally. I never 
never thought I would be a Pilates person because I didn't know what it was. And then all of a sudden, it was in my face, and there I was. And 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 I decided like I can take this information, this three thousand dollar education that was a lot less expensive than my PT degree, and I could poo on it and think it was useless, or I could say, huh, I can teach this to every one of my clients and create a loyal community that my people stick around for years and want to keep sticking around. They want to be there because it's not about pain, it's about wellness. So, And I do think wellness is probably much more taught in school now than it ever was. Yeah. We didn't learn anything about wellness. But I will say this, I, I remember one specific thing from PT school, and I think this was our business lecture. It was one guy, yeah. one hour, and he was a home health PT who did home, I'm sorry, he had a clinic that he worked in in the morning and he did home health in the afternoon. And all I remember about his lecture was that he ate his lunch in his car because he was running around crazy. And that was what he, that was the takeaway about the business. He was a, he was a successful businessman that needed to eat his lunch in the car because he was so stressed going from this, this job to then home health all over. And I'm going, man, that's, if that's the takeaway from this. And, and, and I, and that was a long, that was 1996 or seven. And, and like, I don't remember a lot from back then, but I remember that was a total waste of time. It was a 100% waste of time. And that was my, my business education. Eat lunch in the car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. It's, it's crazy to see like how far we've come in just a short period of time. Yep. I mean, yep. you know, the, the information's out there. There's a lot of people doing a lot of great things, giving a lot of great tips. Uh, you know, and I, I've seen a lot of common themes this weekend and, uh, you know, Stephen, I just can't thank you enough for your time and for coming on the show today um, where can people reach out to you if they have follow up questions yeah. or they want to learn more about Pilates or they just want to chat yeah uh, on my Facebook uh, personal page Stephen Dunn or the, the Facebook page I mentioned earlier uh, Facebook uh, uh, Pilates for PTs my email address is uh, sdunn s-d-u-n-n at therapy and Pilates dot com um, and therapy and Pilates dot com is my actual business um, my, my studio uh, location or studio Web, dry, web address, excuse me. So I can be reached out in any of those ways. Most people reach out to me these days through Facebook. That's become the Facebook Messenger um, and through the either the Facebook group or just through you know a personal message to me. And that's where uh, most people are reaching out these days. And that's where most conversations start. I think that's where that's where you and I started our conversation was through some Facebook messaging. So. Well, Stephen, I can't thank you enough for your time. We appreciate you coming on. I can't wait to see what you got coming down the road, man. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. Thanks for your time, man. Have a good one, buddy. Access to healthcare is one of the largest issues facing both providers and patients, as millions of people worldwide lack timely and affordable access to healthcare. Anywhere Healthcare, a telehealth platform, is a simple, low-cost option for providers and patients that eliminates the barriers to access to all kinds of healthcare. To find out more, check out anywhere.healthcare, which is available on our show notes. And if you use the code HET in all caps when you email to sign up, you'll save 25% off the total cost. Thank you for attending class today, and we hope that you learned something and gained value from the content. If you'd like to schedule office hours with us, feel free to add us on Twitter at HET Podcast, on Instagram, HET Podcast, on Facebook, the Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast, and the homepage, healthcareeducationtransformationpodcast.com. And for those of you following along in the syllabus, extra credit can be obtained by liking us, sharing us, and leaving a review. Let's continue our journey up Mount Educational Success as lifelong learners.